Greetings from the black holes of Dakota Territory, United States of Aberration. Stanji Balisco here. I remember the old Met Stadium, Metropolitan Stadium in Bloomington, Minnesota. And I remember the Minnesota Twins from 1960s and 1970s, but particularly the mid-1960s, the highlight of which was when my dad took me to the second game of the 1965 World Series and I watched Sandy Koufax, perhaps the greatest pitcher of all time, get shellacked by a bunch of upstarts who hadn't figured out that he was unbeatable yet. Later they figured it out and the Twins lost the series in seven games. But I, I remember that second game and Bob Allison's catch in left field and many other things about that stadium. The great shout of adulation when Harmon Killebrew came to bat. Every time he came to bat, the crowd would roar just because he was there. I remember players like Don Mincher who uncorked a 452-foot home run one night that went out of the park. And I knew he was going to do it. And I knew exactly when he was going to do it. And by golly, he did. I remember Tony Oliva, Mudcat Grant, Jim Cott. Those were the people that my dad took me to see on those summer nights when the, the, the chirps would cricket in the little coves on the way up from Rochester to Minneapolis. We'd drive across a road that was pretty much a deserted or a, a country road to get to the stadium from Highway 52. I guess now that road is no longer quite so much in the country. It goes through places like Apple Valley. Um, but I remember that stadium, Metropolitan Stadium, and the first time I went there, maybe I was eight years old, and I thought, Neapolitan Stadium, you know, ice cream. It was colorful. The exterior was colorful and reminded me of Neapolitan ice cream. And I, as time went on, I developed favorite players, but my favorite one of all was a guy named Ted Ulander. Do you remember Ted Ulander? He used to go to bat with this gigantic chaw in his mouth. And from a distance, it looked like he was sticking his jaw out at the pitcher, like, try to, try to get one past me, you son of a sea cook. And every now and then, he'd smash a homer. And when he did, he really clobbered that ball. He was not, uh, you know, he was not a great and famous player. Probably not many of you even from that era remember him very much. Just like you may have forgotten people like Rich Rollins and Bernie Allen. But they were very good baseball players and of course a kid always remembers his childhood idol baseball players as the best players who ever picked up a stick and slapped a ball with it. Now that stadium is gone. It would have eventually collapsed, I suppose, because of age anyway. But if I'm not mistaken, the only part of that stadium left is home plate, which resides on the floor somewhere in an institution known as the Mall of America something about as familiar to us here in the black holes of Dakota Territory as a palm tree in Antarctica. Such is life, such is time, and such are memories. I hope those of you who grew up during that time and watched those players remember them with fondness today. I just couldn't help it. I had to remember them. I, it's just something that gets you. You know what I'm saying? Stan Jabalisco signing off for now. Until next time. So long.